Hey everybody and welcome to another Cricut Craft tutorial. Before we get started, be sure to subscribe to my channel. Just hit that big red subscribe button down below. It's completely free and if you hit that bell icon, it will let you know anytime I post a new video or when I go live. I'm really excited for today's video. I promised it to you forever ago and I had to work through some kinks. That way you guys didn't have to. So what I'm going to show you today is how to make a huge yard character. This guy is 36 inches tall and I made him with corrugated plastic. Now what's great about corrugated plastic is it is weatherproof. This is what they used to make like political signs out of and things like that. So he's perfect to go outside. But just for an extra bit of fun, I made some little holders, little signs for him and he can hold on to them and he's ready for holidays. How cute is this? So I made a bunch of different little ones. So I'm gonna show you guys how to make these as well as how to make our Olaf and cut everybody out. They're really, really fun and really easy to do. I'm so excited to show you guys how to make your very own yard character. Let's get started. We're gonna start in Design Space for this project. Now I'm going to do Olaf, but you can do any character or design that you want. I have purchased Olaf from uh, design space a while back and it's all dollar ninety nine so I'm gonna use the one that I have but you guys can get lots of different images from Etsy or make your own I have a video showing you how to make your own here in Cricut design space and also one for silhouette so I'll link both of those down below for you but what we're gonna do is make a really fun big Olaf so here is our little Olaf now the first thing I'm gonna do is zoom out so he's gonna look really small but don't worry, we're gonna make him about 36 inches tall. So what I'm gonna do is up here at the top where it says size, I'm gonna change the height to 36 and hit enter. Now, because it's locked, it should keep all of your dimensions and all of that intact for you. Now with Olaf, I would like to actually do a little bit of an offset. The black outline is great, but I want it just a little bit bigger than what it currently is. So what I'm gonna do is over in my layers panel over here is select the black basic cut and I wanna click the word offset. It may take a moment to load, but once it loads, the 0.25 is actually a really good size for his offset. So we're gonna go ahead and just leave it as 0.25 and click apply. Now I'm gonna go ahead and hide the um, basic cut here that's showing and I'm gonna go ahead and change the offset to black. It just makes it a little bit easier to see. Now there's a couple things that I like to do with my Olaf and let me zoom out a little bit more so you guys can see him fully. So he has these gray buttons. I don't typically cut those out because I think it looks okay if the black just shows through. He still looks complete so I don't like to cut them if I don't have to and they're just not my favorite. So I'm not going to bother cutting those at all. Now our Olaf is sized, he's good to go. He is gonna be a little bit bigger than 36 inches. He actually um, increases by 0.5 inches for adding that little thicker offset. You can change it back down to 36 if you want him to be exactly 36 or you can just leave it however you want to. Now when I just changed it, I only had the offset selected. So I need to hit undo because I need to make sure that I select all of him. Now occasionally Cricut Design Space um, likes to think that I'm trying to grab something and move it. That's not the case. I'm not trying to do that. Um, so what I'm going to go ahead and do is just change this back to 36. That little half inch really doesn't matter, but that's what we're going to do. So what I'm going to do now is take Olaf, which is like all of his white and his orange and his blue and his brown, and just move it over to the side. We'll come back to that in just a minute. I actually need to slice Olaf up a little bit, which sounds so cruel, but we need to make him into smaller, more manageable pieces for our Cricut design space to cut. He is um, a little too big to do as is unless we slice him up. So remember, the Cricut can really only cut 11.5 by 23.5 if you're using um, a non 13 inch piece of material. If you're using the smart materials, it can cut way longer, but it's still only limited to 11.7. Um, I'm gonna cut this with StarCraft HD, so we do need to slice them up 
into a certain size so that he'll fit. So when I tested this out, I found some of the best ways I wanted to slice him and what worked great for his body and to make him really work easily. So what I'm gonna do is first open up a square shape and I wanna just cut off his hair at the top. This is an easy piece to line up with the rest of his head. So I just wanna cut off his hair and then all I'm gonna do is give myself a flat side to work with and you can really expand this quite a bit to give yourself a little bit more space to kind of build on. But you do want to make sure that your square doesn't go past 11.5 wide. So I'm going to go ahead and see and what I'm telling you. I wasn't trying to grab him, but he moved. So I'm going to click undo really quick and move him back. And then I'm going to draw a square around the square and Olaf and click slice. Now this might take a second to actually compute but once it does you're gonna have a couple pieces and all I'm gonna do is get rid of all of the gray parts we don't need those the next thing that I'm gonna do is open up a circle and I'm gonna duplicate that a couple times I found that working with the circles really worked easier than trying to work with the um, like squares for this part because we're gonna cover his arms so all I'm going to do is put a bunch of circles on top of his arms and I'm just going to expand them as much as I need to to cover those arms. Then all I want to do is hold shift on my keyboard and click all three circles that cover his arm, click weld, and then I'm going to slice the arm off of his body. So again, I just draw a circle, I select him and the circles and click slice. And again, it may take a moment to work. So we're gonna get rid of anything that is gray and only keep the black ones and you can move it over to the side. We'll go ahead and do his other arm. Now you'll want to send the black to the back. It's a lot easier. So right click on the black and click send to back. Then you can move your circles, resize them, do whatever you need to do to make them work best for you. And Olaf here. And then I'm just gonna cover up his arm as much as I can with a couple circles. And I don't want to get like into his head or his body or anything with the circles. I only want to chop off of his arm, which again, sounds so cruel, but I promise it's fine. Um, so you can go ahead and just delete this circle. You don't need it anymore. And it'll make it easier to grab these circles because you can just grab them over in the layers panel. I hold control, select all of them in the layers panel, and then click weld. You have to weld them to slice because you can only slice two items. Now, I think I am overlapping just a hair right there on his body, so I just moved my circles a little bit. Select the circles and the black part of Olaf and click slice. The next thing I'm gonna do is just slice him up with some squares. So all I'm gonna do is make a square the size that is the largest amount we can cut. So once I move everything out of the way, all I'm gonna do is open up a shape, open up a square, and then in the middle of the sizing, I'm going to click the unlock button. I'm going to make it 11.5 wide and 23.5 tall. That's as large as we can cut with our Cricut designs or with our Cricut machine. So all I'm going to do now is figure out how I want to slice him up. You can kind of do however you want, whatever works best for you. I think I'm going to go sideways with this. I think it will slice a little bit better. So I'm going to go ahead and duplicate my square just so I have an extra so that I can go ahead and kind of cut him again as I feel necessary. So what I'm gonna do is select his body and this square and I'm going to click slice. I'm gonna go ahead and finish the rest of his body really quick and then I'll show you how to do all the colored parts. Once you have his body all sliced up, you can kind of just piece it back together if you want to. I usually do this just to kind of make sure I got everything. I look like I have all of him. It looks good. I've got his arms, his legs. Okay, we're good. His head's not going to fit, so we'll just kind of throw it over there. So now what you want to do is come over to this portion of your Olaf and click ungroup. Now the white of his mouth should fit fine without having to do anything. That, that's actually blue. I know my colors. And then his orange nose will be fine. So first thing we'll do is let's go ahead and work on the brown because it's too big the way it is. So what I'm going to do is actually duplicate it and I'm going to use the contour function to remove the arms on one of them. That's just going to leave us with his eyebrows and his hair and that's small enough to fit. I'm going to duplicate it again and I'm going to contour again. 
This time I'm going to remove the hair, the eyebrows, and one arm, leaving just one arm to be cut with this design. And our final one that's left, go ahead and contour out everything but that other arm. And you can just contour by clicking. Now we have all three pieces for the brown. So again, we can kind of just slide those into a pile. Doesn't really matter. Now we're onto the white of his body. His head and his middle part fit just fine. We will need to slice his bottom. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna duplicate him and again, contour out the parts that I don't need. So let's start with just leaving his head behind. So again, just click all of the pieces that you don't want to be involved in this. And you'll see here that all we're left with is his head and his head will fit just fine into our cutting parameters. Duplicate him again, click contour, and then this time we'll leave the middle section. So we'll just do this. And you can also contour over here on the side. So if you're having trouble kind of grabbing something over on his face, you can just contour it out using the side. So like you wanna make sure all those pieces are gone, middle of his eye and all of that. And all that should be left is this middle section of him, which is perfectly small enough to fit. And the last thing that we're gonna keep is his bottom half, which like I said, we are going to need to contour out. So all I'm gonna do, and I wanna leave those, is get rid of all of these other little pieces. Oops, we wanna keep those. And go ahead and just click contour. So you'll see that he's 15 and a half, well, almost 15, a little over that, and then a little over 14 wide. So he's not gonna fit. So again, just get a square, simple as this. This is really easy to do, and we'll piece him together on our plastic. So all I'm gonna do is take my square and I'm just gonna make it kind of bigger and I want to slice it and I'm gonna slice this circle in half because that's gonna be a really easy way to line him up. So just click slice and it may take a moment again as always and you can get rid of all of the gray parts. And now you have pieces of him that will fit on to our map. Now we're gonna hit make it to create our Olaf. Now you can cut this any way that you would like to. Um, you can cut him, you can just cut that outline first, then cut your plastic, cut everything at once, it's up to you. So what I'm gonna do is because I'm using my Maker 3, I need to let it know that I'm going to be using the mat for this and click done. It's gonna break it up into different mats and it's kinda of gonna base it on the size of your cuts. So you'll see here we have a 24 inch mat for pieces of Olaf and then there's the white parts of him. Then we have some black mats with more parts, but this arm can 100% fit on this mat. So what I'm gonna do is select this black mat, select his arm and click move object by clicking those three little circles in that upper corner select the mat I'd like to put his arm on and click confirm and then just move his arm so that it's not overlapping any of the other pieces. Then I'm going to scroll down and you'll see that you have orange and brown and we can actually fit these brown pieces better together as well. So I'm going to go ahead and move his little arm. I'm going to click move object and select the um, one I want to put it on and you'll see, look at that it fits better. And what you can always do is turn them because his arms are different. So you'll be able to tell them apart when you go to cut them. So what you can kind of do is move them around and see if you can fit his hair part onto the same mat, which I really think we will be able to. It looks like it's going to fit just fine in this upper corner. Now you may need to kind of move things a little bit around and fidget with them a bit just so they don't overlap. But the big thing is to make sure they don't overlap anywhere. That cut three pieces of brown vinyl down to one, so it's a great vinyl saver. And then last but not least, we have his mouth. Now again, I'm cutting these on StarCraft HD, so it just uses the vinyl setting. Let's get started and get cutting. I have my really long Cricut mat. I have my roll of vinyl. I'm using StarCraft HD in the gloss. I've got gloss white and gloss black pulled up right now. So what I'm going to do is lay my vinyl on my long mat. So it's super important that you keep the plastic that goes to your mat. It keeps it from getting any kind of like debris on it. So this wants us to start with our white. So what I'm going to do is I always check to see like, is this a relatively straight line? It's straight enough. So I'm going to go ahead and fix that because it keeps coming unrolled. 
And all I'm going to do is just gently lay this down. And this doesn't have to be perfect at the top, but you do want to try to get it pretty even. And then I'm going to unroll it. And I'm not going to worry about how even it is right now because I'm going to trim it a little bit. This could kind of waste a little bit of vinyl. So if you're somebody who doesn't like to waste any, you, you want to leave it on the roll. But I find these big 10 yard rolls are a little bit much to work with. So all I did was I just put a little snip down in the end of my roll and I'll show you guys. This has a really easy to use grid on the back. So what I do is I put a little snip about where the end of my roll is or my mat and then I'm just going to cut along the line as straight as possible. I mean I can't cut a straight line to save my life. Um, you could use a paper trimmer for this if you wanted to. I have one. I just would rather just use scissors rather than dragging that out. So I'm going to go ahead and just trim that off. Set that roll to the side. Now you'll notice what I do is I tuck my mat under my machine. I'm going to open my machine door and what I'm going to do is take my roll of vinyl, lay it across the top of my machine and then come and lay my vinyl down on my mat using my machine to keep most of my vinyl off my mat and then I just pull my mat from under my machine, laying my vinyl down as I go. This is probably one of my favorite little hacks to putting long pieces of vinyl onto your Cricut. So then all I'm going to do is go ahead and load my vinyl on my mat. And the Cricut maker is a little bit different, so it's going to read the tool between every single mat. It takes it a little bit longer to cut things that are not smart material because of this feature. I don't love that about the Cricut Maker 3. It's probably my um, main pet peeve with it. So I'm going to go ahead and let this cut out all pieces. Um, you guys really don't need to watch this cut. It cuts it just like any other machine. So I'm going to let this cut and then we'll weed it and then I'm going to show you guys how to apply. So unless I somehow put my video camera all the way on my second floor of my house, I can't show you the whole Olaf all-in-one um, shot. However, I will kind of pull him so you can see. I just dry fit him so he's just laying. He's not really fit together perfectly, but I wanted to just make sure that I kind of got his pieces where they were supposed to go so you can see he's all kind of laid out. So I am going to start with this huge chunk here. This is like his, um, I guess it would be his right foot, and then this is his little left foot. So I'm going to move all the pieces kind of out of the way. And what I want to make sure that I do is put this foot pretty close to the bottom edge. So I'm going to move this up a little bit. Um, so I'm going to make sure I put this foot close to the bottom edge because he is really tall. Um, he takes up almost this entire sheet of plastic. So I just want to be sure that everything fits. So I'm going to use a medium tack transfer tape from a 143 vinyl. And don't forget that you can use my code Corinne to save 5% on their website. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll this out. And I'm sorry, this part's kind of long, loud. Okay, so I'm gonna lay that down, make sure that he's gonna fit. He'll fit fine. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay him down onto the transfer tape. But I'm gonna be pretty careful about it because I wanna make sure that I keep everything relatively flat. So I'm just gonna lay him down. And then I'm gonna trim this off of the roll simple as that. And I'll flip him back over. Now when working with these big pieces you will tend to get some air bubbles and that's okay. Air bubbles are not going to be the end of the world but you can see that there are some in the transfer tape. So what I'm going to do is take my squeegee and as I burnish I'm just going to kind of push some of those bigger air bubbles out. You'll hear them kind of popping as I pull across. And again, it's really okay if they're in the transfer tape. It's not going to be the end of the world. But I do want to make sure that I give this a decent burnish all the way across so that we make sure it sticks to our transfer tape. Now again, you can see there's some big bubbles, but I'm not worried about them. They won't transfer to your vinyl. Now, there's a couple ways you can do this. You can do this with the hinge method. You can do this just pulling it off and using it all as one big piece. But personally, because I need to get this pretty close to the edge of our um, image here, I want, or our plastic, I want to use the hinge method because it's going to hold it in place where I need it to stay. 
and it's also going to give it a little bit of a stability for me to help me not get a ton of bubbles because if you get bubbles in this layer you're going to get bubbles in your next layer um, a couple little bubbles aren't going to hurt especially smaller ones they will eventually kind of move and like work their way out so what we'll do is we're going to take a piece of um, painters tape now this is the last little bit on this roll but I do have another so don't worry and I'm just going to make sure I have a really long piece I like having a nice long piece and I'm going to just push that across. Now I'm just going to do another quick little dry fit with his arms just to make sure that his arms will fit onto the sides of the board because those are like the biggest part. They stick out really far because he's got really long arms. His arms fit so that's good. Now what you're going to do is basically create a hinge by using this as your um, fold point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold my the decal over and I'm going to peel the backing of the vinyl off. Do you see how I kind of folded the vinyl part up and the backing is down here? I'm going to take a pair of scissors and I'm just going to gently cut across the vinyl or the vinyl backing. Being careful not to cut the vinyl. If you get to a certain point, you can usually just rip it off. And that is a really easy way to do that. Toss that vinyl backing to the side. We don't need it. Now what you're going to do is take your squeegee and I liken this to kind of walking it down the plastic. So I'm holding the plastic kind of with my hip on the table, like at the end of the table, you guys can't see it, but it's against my hip and I'm gonna just push this vinyl down as I go, working it into the plastic. And you'll see that I'm going pretty slowly. I'm going in fairly small sections and I'm just pressing it really well down and I'm just working my way gently down the vinyl. It does help to hold the plastic so it's not rolling everywhere and moving. It is pretty slippery. And then we're just gonna push this all the way down the plastic. This is one of my favorite ways to lay these large decals. The hinge method is so helpful for this because it holds everything in place. You can see I'm only working with a smaller section, even though it's pretty big. This is the, probably the biggest section I have of Olaf is this bottom foot area. So this is where I really wanted to concentrate and start. So I'm gonna go ahead and give that a good little swipe across. And then what you're gonna do is peel up your painter's tape. You can save this piece of tape because you can reuse it. So don't toss it. We can reuse this a couple more times. So what I like to do is I'll just stick it across my table or on one of my Cricut machines or something like that to hold it. So now you're going to use your second hinge. So what you're going to do is fold this back just like you did the first part. We're going to go ahead and peel the backing off of our vinyl, keeping this kind of held backwards towards you. Again, toss the backing. You don't need it. And then again, we're going to take and use our squeegee. Now when I do this side, because I don't have a way to hold it, I will actually, I don't know if you guys can see, my elbow is holding this down and I'm actually leaning on to the plastic to help hold it from sliding around too much because you really want to minimize the slide. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and finish pushing this section down and then I'll show you guys how to line a section up and the rest will go a lot faster. Once you have that all pressed down, you can remove your transfer tape. Now, depending on how sticky it was to begin with, you could probably reuse it again. We'll see how bad it curls up because if it gets really curly, it's hard to reuse again because you want to make sure that you try to keep it as flat as possible. So what I'm going to do is you can see, see how sharp I'm pulling this back. It's folded flat over on itself and it's making a nice sharp angle. See how nice that is? It comes off so easy, but it really likes to stick to this corrugated plastic. So what you're gonna wanna do is just kinda get a good grip on it and pull backwards. It's really tough to pull, but oh, it's cause it wants to stick so well, and I totally bumped the camera, but it wants to stick so well to this plastic. Now I do have just a teeny tiny little, little bump right here, little bubble. This little bubble will more than likely go away when it comes time to actually apply everything once we cut around our stencil. So I'm gonna show you guys how to line up his other cute little adorable footy over here. And this part is gonna be pretty simple, but we're gonna need some parchment paper. So all we use is just some parchment paper you can get at Target or uh, Walmart, Dollar Tree, lots of places, Amazon. And I'm just gonna get a small piece for this. I don't really need like a huge 
piece, I just need kind of enough to kind of cover his little foot there. Because these pieces are a little bit smaller, this is gonna be an easy way to line them up. So I'm just gonna flip that over, make sure it covers it, it does. Now what you'll wanna do, get some more transfer tape. Again, you can reuse it if it's not super curly. I curled that one really bad. So I'm just gonna get a new piece of a transfer tape. Usually the bigger decals do tend to take a little bit of um, a toll on rolling up your transfer tape. But these smaller ones are a little easier. So again, I'm just gonna lay this down on my transfer tape. And then I'm gonna trim my transfer tape off. Now, for whatever reason, when I cut this on the Maker 3, it did cut a little like spot through my um, backing. And I don't know why it did that. It was very odd that it did that. I've not seen it do that before. So I'm not sure what was going on with that little section, but it should come off fine. It didn't cut through anywhere else, so I'm not really that concerned about it. So I'll go ahead and we're gonna peel off the backing just like you do any of your other decals. But again, it did cut through in one spot, so I just needed to be a little gentle there. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip this guy over onto my parchment paper. Now you'll note that I do have a little tail of transfer tape sticking out over the parchment paper. You see the parchment paper and the tail is right there. So what I'm gonna do, this parchment paper makes it so that the vinyl doesn't stick to the um, plastic, which is super nice because now I can really take my time to line up his little booty here because this is part of his tush and his um, leg. So this is like the bottom of Olaf. So what I just do is I make sure everything looks pretty straight and lined up. Now, if you have a teeny tiny gap, the likelihood of that being any kind of an issue is slim to none because it will be covered up by the rest of your um, design. So now that I have him lined up really well, he's exactly where I want him to be, I'm gonna pop my parchment paper out. Now, this can sometimes be a little bit tricky, so just go slow. And then what I just do is I just make sure that it looks like it's lined up. Because this is such a long decal, I know I'm gonna need to adjust down here at the bottom a little bit for it because it is so long. And now that it looks pretty lined up, all I'm gonna do is just like the other one, except this time we're not using the hinge method, we're just kind of holding the vinyl. We're gonna press the vinyl down all the way across. Again, just paying special close attention and making sure that we cover the entire piece of vinyl as we press across. Now again, this one does have bubbles in the transfer tape, but those should not transfer over to our vinyl. All right, now that you guys have seen me line those pieces up, I'm gonna do the same thing for all the rest of our pieces. If I had to show you guys every piece, this video would be 11 years long and nobody wants that. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the rest of Olaf lined up for the black parts and then we're gonna get to cut them out. I cut Olaf out, so he's all cut out of our plastic. I just used a hot knife and I do apologize that I didn't record any of it. I had to do it outside. I didn't think to even record it, which was silly of me, but I'll link the hot knife that I used down below. It worked really, really well, but definitely do it in a well-ventilated area. Um, it did take me about an hour to cut this out, but um, I think I could have cut that down to about 30 minutes if I would have started the way that I ended, if that makes sense. So I learned a few lessons. Um, Make sure you're cutting him like not on top of something, like hold him off the edge of the table and then your knife goes through a lot easier. And go slow because your knife will stay hotter then. So now what we're gonna do is put Olaf back together, so to speak. So we are going to take all of his pieces, parts, and put him back together much like Humpty Dumpty. So I know that this is the first part I wanna do because it is my biggest. So I think this is gonna be the easiest one to start with and it's the bottom of his foot down here. So what I'm gonna do is just like I did the black, I'm gonna take and put these pieces on to transfer tape. And again, I'm just gonna lay them down and then cut them out. And I'm gonna try to reuse the transfer tape, but if I don't get a chance to, that's okay. Not really the end of the world. So I've got this white piece. So all I'm gonna do is go ahead and just, and again, it's gonna get bubbles, it's fine no big deal, they will come out. 
And we're going to use the parchment paper hingy hacky method to do this. So the first thing that I'm going to go ahead and do is flip this over and peel off his little foot. And I'll move him up a little bit so you guys can see. So I'm only going to peel it off right where his foot is. And then I'm going to fold my transfer tape back just like in a hinge kind of situation. And then I'm going to take my parchment paper. I'm going to place my foot on my parchment paper. And remember, we do have a pretty wide um, offset on him. So what I'm going to do is kind of use these edges to kind of make sure that everything looks about the same thickness when I lay this down because we did do kind of a wide offset. So I'm pretty happy with that. I think that looks good. So first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and remove my parchment paper. And I got a little wrinkle right there, but we'll work on it. And I'm going to press down the part of his foot that is on the plastic here. And then I'm going to use the backing and I'm just going to lightly pull it. And I'm just pressing the squeegee down as I pull the paper away. And your squeegee can actually press the paper off pretty easily. So that's all I'm doing. I'm just going to go around gently removing that. And then just following that vinyl all the way around. Now there is a piece of hair stuck to my vinyl. You can probably see it. Oh, you know what? That's not hair. I'm silly. I forgot to weed his button. That's okay. We can fix that. So I totally forgot to weed his button. I was thinking it was a piece of hair, but it's of the button that we didn't weed. So let's go ahead and make sure this is pressed down and then we'll go ahead and pull that off. That is not a big deal. It happens sometimes and we can just take it off. So go ahead and just pull off that transfer tape and beautiful. So let me get my pin pen so we can get this out of there. This happens from time to time. You'll forget something and don't worry, it'll come off. It may take a little bit more work than like if you were to actually weed it when you were supposed to, but it'll come off. You just need to kind of get it started. So what I do is I'll get my pin pen under it and then I will pull it and it may rip a little. That's okay. Don't worry about it. You're not keeping it anyways. You just need to get it off of the black because it wasn't supposed to be there. I completely forgot to get a button there. There we go. See, all better. This was like crisis averted. No big deal. Again, if you have any like little bubbles, you can kind of work them out, pop them with your pin pen if you need to. I didn't get too many. I've got a few down here in his little foot, but the rest of it looks pretty good. Um, but there is one kind of big one. So I'm just going to take my pin pen and just touch it and then press it down. If you see any other like micro ones, those will likely work their way out. But if they're really bothering you, just pop them with the pin pen. That's all you need to do real easy. out all of the pieces including the big Ola but this is more of a sawing kind of stabbing motion with this hot knife I've linked the one that I used down below but you'll want to make sure that you do this outside and read all the safety precautions with this because not only is it hard hot it's very sharp too so you'll want to just make sure that you're being very very careful I found doing this off the side of the table was the easiest and you can see how easy it came out now that we have all of our little pieces cut out we used our little hot knife for them we are going to use some Scotch brand. This is the Extreme Strong. This is a really, really strong Velcro. And what I like about this one is that it's just one-sided. So you're not going to waste a bunch of Velcro by doing it this way. So all I'm going to do, and I'm, I'm going to use this guy kind of as my measurement because he's got the smallest portion. So I'm probably going to cut him a little bit bigger than that circle. And all I'm going to do trim off the velcro now this stuff is really pretty thick so you're going to want to use a decent pair of scissors to do this and then all i'm going to do is just trim a bunch of squares in about the same size it doesn't have to be exact you can measure if you'd like them a little more exact but it really doesn't need to be and what we'll do is stick one to olaf's hand and then one to each of our design pieces so i'm gonna go ahead and get this all cut out and then let's stick them on now that i've gotten all of these kind of pulled off all I'm going to do 
is kind of move all off a little bit here so we can see a little bit better. And I'm just gonna grab one of these and then the backing here peels off and it's adhesive on the back. And this stuff is really, really strong. So all you'll need to do, pick where you want this to sit on his hand and press that down. And then for each of your pieces, you just wanna figure out about where you want them to sit on his hand. So obviously we know that our little ornament, we're gonna hang it by the ball at the top. And then each of the other pieces, I'm kind of gonna like lay them down and figure out where I want them to stick. Cause like this one especially needs to kind of be at the bottom of the flagpole so that it can hold on. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put that right here. And this sticks really well to this corrugated plastic. So then for the heart, I don't really mind if it sits a little bit like in the center. So again, I'm just gonna grab one of these and peel off. The next thing that we're gonna do is get the stake to stake him into the ground. And then the little birdie, depending on where you want him to sit, if you want him to sit like in his hand or you want him to lay like this, I think I want him to sit a little bit more like he's sitting on his hand. So I'm gonna use the, um, put it on his little feet. This stuff is very staticky. So I'm gonna let this sit for just a little bit so it can kind of have a minute for the adhesive to cure before we stick everything on. But you can see we have the Velcro all stuck on. And again, this is the Scotch Extremely Strong. So what we'll do now, like I said, we're gonna get the metal stake and then I'm gonna show you guys what he looks like. I wanted to show you how to change out his little decorations. So all you do is just simply pop them off. This is like a locking type of Velcro. So you just kind of snap it together. It's really easy to use, but you'll wanna make sure that you hold his hand pretty tightly. I think he came out really cute. It was quite a bit of a project. He did take a while, but what I love is that he is going to withstand the weather because he's made out of plastic and vinyl that is made to be outside. If you guys have any questions, please let me know in those comments. I have everything that I used linked down below in the description for you guys. If you want to, please visit my website to sign up for my newsletter at corinneblackstone.com. And as always, have a great day and happy crafting.